Hello everybody, this is Stuart from Resolved Analytics. Uh, if you're not familiar with us, we're a computational engineering company specializing in computational fluid dynamics, otherwise known as CFD. Uh, we're in the midst of releasing a multi-part blog series uh, comparing popular CFD packages. And right now we're focused on the category of CFD software known as CAD integrated or CAD embedded CFD. These are programs that can be accessed directly from a relating CAD software. Um, one entry in this space that has created quite a lot of buzz lately is Discovery Live from ANSYS. And today I'll be walking you through a uh, setup of a problem and, and some of the pros and cons of using Discovery Live. Discovery Live is integrated with ANSYS's 3D software Space Claim. If you're familiar with space claim, you may know that it's a direct modeling approach to CAD geometry. Um, many of the popular CAD programs, such as Onshape, SolidWorks, Inventor, use uh, the more common parametric modeling methodology. Um, the direct modeling approach is a bit more intuitive. There's a lot of interaction via mouse clicks and drags. Uh, it was it was formulated kind of as a a reaction to folks who want to have a more uh, interactive approach to building geometries um, and quick and dirty changes and uh, parametric modeling can be overly complex for those folks and to a degree Discovery Live can be thought of as the CFD analogy to that. Uh, it allows for on-the-fly changes that can be, uh, the impact of those can be uh, almost instantaneo instantaneously seen in CFD results. So let's get going here. Uh, the geometry that I have is a cityscape. We're gonna be doing a virtual wind tunnel test of that. So you see the enclosure surrounding the city. Um, the geometry was downloaded from GrabCAD, and if you're a CFD person, you'll know that with traditional CFD methods, this geometry would present an immense challenge. Uh, CFD, historically, uh, with a focus on accuracy, really requires a high-precision CAD geometry. Surfaces can't be over overlapping. Um, can't be non-manifold, can't have small slivers of volumes, needs to be a closed fluid volume, and so on and so forth. And those requirements mean that producing a computational mesh in the traditional sense uh, can be very challenging for uh, CAD geometries that weren't created with CFD in mind, such as this one. Um, here, Discovery Live is doing a number of things in the background that make it able to at least produce a result, which we'll see maybe missing some accuracy, but still leaves us some utility of uh, the model. So let's get started. Um, the right boundary conditions are applied as in traditional CFD models. We have an inlet velocity condition on our, our right hand boundary we have a couple of slip symmetry conditions on the side walls and we have a pressure outlet boundary condition you can click on each of those boundaries quite easily and change the type of boundary condition that's applied there so it's uh, fairly convenient uh, kind of a limited number of uh, boundary types at this point but that's to be expected this is discovery live is in its first release uh, I can go up to the uh, top right hand corner of the uh, menu here and unclick the enclosure so that it's hidden. Um, from there we'll start a simulation. Uh, there's a menu at the bottom. You can change the fidelity. This basically means choosing a coarse or a fine mesh. Push run and you'll see the time start stepping off. Uh, time is really moving on here meaning that this is a very coarse time step problem. Um, we click on the contour plane to show the velocity magnitude contours, which is a typical CFD output, and you start to see the flow develop, and the uh, low areas 
use low velocity areas behind the buildings. <coughs> uh, we can use the compass in the bottom left to quickly change between views on the um, of the contour planes, get a get a sense of the 3D perspective of the model. Um, controls are much the same as they are in other programs. You can rotate and pan the model as you see fit. We'll go up and, and choose the edit menu and pull this contour plane. Um, kind of a nice feature to be able to just click the contour plane and drag it around and by doing so we start to get a sense of what the velocity field is doing over the entire domain. And as I pull through here, you'll see that, as you'd expect behind most buildings, we have blue, a lot of blue showing up, which is corresponding to low areas of velocity. So those are areas of recirculation. Another nice thing that we can do with the contour plots is we can uh, double click it and then just choose a direction and it, it, it swings the uh, orientation of the contour plane in the around in the direction that you want. And you can again click through, click it and drag it through the model to see. Um, now if you pay careful, careful attention here, you'll start to see that um, not all of the buildings actually have a blue area behind them. And we'll see this in more detail and we'll go into why that is here in a minute. So from there, we'll uh, look at some other things you can do with these contour planes. Uh, it's available to select uh, either velocity as a contour plane or pressure as a contour plane to look for low areas uh, of pressure and high areas of pressure. Uh, you can also look at temperature. In our case, we have an isothermal model set up here so the temperature doesn't show anything interesting. Um, you can s also show the vorticity calculated using the lambda 2 method. We can switch this from a surface to a composite and take off the cut plane and you see some nice visualizations. If you Google Discovery Live, you'll see a lot of this kind of visualization. It's a visualization basically of the vortices forming behind the buildings. We can adjust these composite contours with these sliders for the bandwidth and uh, the value. And so get, just get them where you want them. Get them to produce some nice looking visualizations. Um, next, we're going to activate this museum building towards the back of the domain. We'll right click over here in space and we'll see that we have a menu uh, menu options for adding line plots corresponding to various uh, functions of that prop of that building. One is the total force in the z direction on that building, which would correspond to the drag on that building, which might be something of interest. <coughs> we see that um, in in both short and longer time frames, we're fluctuating quite a bit. Not surprising for a course mesh to be doing that. We can try to take out some of the, the smaller wiggles using the time averaged um, option on the solver. Um, but you see we still have some long time average stuff going on. Uh, now let's move into some of the cool stuff uh, applying the direct modeling approach to CFD. I'll, I'll zoom in here on the museum building, taking the contour plane off. Um, Zoom in here, and I'll grab a face. Let, let's grab the top face of what is the railing of the balcony, and I'll simply drag it up. What I'm trying to do here is create a, uh, an enclosed space on this balcony to protect some of the people that are using this, what looks to be a trampoline. We don't want them flying off into space. So, uh, Discovery Live is now cranking in the background, recalculating a mesh. It's going to take about a minute. I'll show you our GPU and CPU utilization here. I'm using a, a NVIDIA card. Uh, it's using between 20 and 100% of that NVIDIA card as it recalculates the lattice that it's going to solve this problem on. Uh, it's not using much of the CPU 
power during this time, but I think it does take advantage of some of the CPU calculations when it's when it's actually calculating a CFD result. Okay, so I think we're about back here. Um, what we had hoped to see are lower velocities in this enclosed space uh, indicating the recirculation zone. You'll notice that the drag on the building had jumped up and now it's coming back down to its final uh, time averaged result. Turning back on the contour plot, uh, we see that unfortunately we didn't capture the recirculation behind these walls. It looks like fluid is actually moving directly through these walls. What's going on here is that the walls are thinner than the minimum resolution of the lattice which Discovery Live is using to solve the CFD problem. Um, it, it's kind of problematic that this is happening. Um, in traditional CFD, if you have an error in a, in a volume, it'll let you know. And what Discovery Live is doing is saying, mm, you know, you might not need to know. We're just going to we're just going to do what we do behind the scenes and you need to be uh, very diligent on your side to make sure that everything looks kosher. Well, that can happen and, and that might not happen in some cases. So what we'll try to do to fix this is we'll crank the fidelity all the way up. So slide the slider to the right on the fidelity and uh, Discovery Live recalculates a new mesh. Now I've fast forwarded through that process. That would have taken a minute or two to do, but um, jumped ahead here and we see that we have totally new drag results uh, quite a bit different than previously um, showing the impact of the mesh refinement or lattice refinement on that particular output of interest but we also see that still the uh, the mesh is too coarse to resolve these walls flow just moves right through the wall we could choose to uh, grab a different surface and try extending that uh, to see if the dimensions of that surface and that new body change would impact any of these results more so than uh, the walls seem to have resulted in. So I'll do that. I'll grab this thicker body, move it up, and uh, we've recalculated a new mesh and now we have a, a positive result. Now we see a larger flow shadow behind the building corresponding to just growing the building up in space. And you see that the drag has jumped down quite a bit as it should. So, um, you know, pluses and minuses, it's pretty cool that we can do things like this. And, um, but it's not, not great that some of what's going on behind the scenes um, results in uncertainty about whether you have resolved the critical physics, critical geometries of your problem. Um, so uh, now before we leave, I want to show you kind of another cool thing uh, with direct modeling approach. Uh, we, as I said, this is a multi-part body uh, turn back on the the lambda two thresholds, and uh, we're seeing some of the recirculation areas behind our buildings here. So this is a multi-part body, and if I zoom out far enough, it turns out there's another body in this simulation. Oh, oh my, that's uh, that's not good. That looks like the Death Star from Star Wars. Yep, yep, way up in the sky, and it's pointed at our city um, it looks like it wants to vaporize building number 11 so I'll just go up to our uh, handy dandy uh, body selector here and unclick body 11 and that's our museum building that we've been working with and you'll see voila <laughs> it's gone uh, drag on the building has gone to zero the recirculation zone has has gone away. Uh, it's floating down free now. Um, so, you know, that's fantastic. Um, I hope that in time we can we can work with this uh, particular 
type of uh, CFD solution, a direct modeling approach, possibly using Lattice Boltzmann and GPU as uh, ANSYS has done here. Um, continue to, uh, to increase the technical capabilities to catch up with kind of the wow factor that it's got right now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, we sure would appreciate your comment in the comment section saying so. Um, and please share it with your friends. And if you want to see this kind of uh, see more of this kind of video, please join our, um, our mailing list and you'll get an update in your inbox uh, that we've made a new post. Uh, go to our blog, check out the entire series on CAD Embedded CFD, also including descriptions of Autodesk CFD and SolidWorks Flow Simulation and stay tuned for future installments corresponding to open foam and comprehensive packages such as star ccm plus and fluent and thanks again for watching until next time take care thank you